Hello everyone and welcome to the last day of the UCI Mountain Bike World Cup season. But don't worry for a second, plenty of mountain bike racing heading your way today. Kick it off with the cross country Olympic discipline for the under 23 men very, very shortly. My name is Rick McLaughlin. Joining me in the booth, I'm proud to say mountain bike's first gold medal Olympian, Bart Brenchens. Bart. It's a very, very wet Monsignor down out there. Yeah, good morning uh, from uh, Monsignor, Canada. Yes, it's, it's very wet at the moment. Uh, a lot of rain we had actually since yesterday evening at start around yeah, after the downhill, luckily. Bart, but, uh, Bart has just emerged into the commentary booth like he's come off the deck of a fishing boat. So. I mean, we had some umbrellas with us, but not that many for yeah. all the riders, all the staff. It's been threatening it all week. It held off mostly for the downhill yesterday, but overnight a storm has hit this place and absolutely soaked it. But the good news is St. Anne can soak up a bit of moisture. Look at my time for the Orbea factory team. Bjorn Riley, next up. Trek Future Race and what a season this young man's having. There's been podiums, there's been top fives. Just missing a win, really. And you can see the rain is still coming down. <laughs> it's buffeting the sides of the commentary booth. I actually feel a bit guilty for being in here. Not that guilty, though. Dario Lilo, Scott Davos, MTV Project, saw that chance of an overall disappear in Snowshoe last time out, but is locked in a battle for second in the overall with Carter Woods. Alexander Hudima, KMC MTB racing team. Yeah, very strong short track from last Thursday's fourth place. Great performance in the short track for Hudima. Riley Amos, one of the emerging stars of this sport. Young American racer. Keen to go well here in Mont saint -Anne. Finish the year on a high. But here's your winner from last time out, Carter Woods. And he was hardly even off the bike before he said about how big a target a win in Mont saint -Anne was. A home soul race for him. Yeah, he'll want this one badly. A lot of fans for him today here in Mont saint -Anne. But here's the overall points leader with an unassailable lead in that competition, Adrian Boishy. Yeah, very strong this season. Super, super strong from Boishy. Short track, but also cross country every time again. Boishy, Woods, Amos, Hedima, Lilo, Riley, Martin, Xavier de Oliveira Pereira, Vidman, Johnson, Braden Johnson, big, big ride in snowshoe last time out. Vittoni, we know he's a fast star. Gutierrez, Prieto gets better every time we see him for the Canyon Collective. Leyland, Crayer, Moyer, Gay, Pedersen, Mario Bear, Ramsey, Malacarney, Wilson, Trudler, Grolon Bear, Bowman. Really, really deep field of talent. Yeah, uh, actually, yeah, a lot of riders also from Europe came over to the overseas races this uh, year, more than normally, I think. But it shows also uh, the depth and the strength of this field. Yep. These uh, on 23 riders, we talk every week that they constantly clock lap times comparable to the elites. So no easy place to ply your trade as we get ready to get them under starters orders. The umbrellas have disappeared. It's time for a wet one. Thirty seconds to go, and we'll get them under starters orders then. You can just see that the fidgeting on the line, the rain jackets, the weather brings a bit of nerves with it, doesn't it, Bart? It's a bit more difficult today. Here we go, red lights then. And it's green for go in a soggy monsoon down. The under 23 men's cross country Olympic World Cup gets underway. Furious pace as ever, and it's Sasha Hudima out front. Yeah, and everything goes well so far, especially here in the beginning. The start always important, the positions. One start loop plus five laps. At least that's what I said Oof. yesterday in the team manager's meeting. 
wondering if they change anything now because of the conditions the slippery yeah. conditions the course is definitely a bit slower. Carter Woods out front then the winner of the last round of the man going for second in the UCI World Cup overall needs to finish above Dario Lilo. Two of them locked in battle for that second place after Adrian Boashi took the short track win. Yeah, this part actually weekend. goes. Is that Lilo just being swallowed up there in the center of the screen? He had a couple of teammates from him uh, around, so they have the same jersey. Looking um, for that blue and yellow jersey. Yeah, there, there. was uh, Dario Lilo in the, around 15th place, I think, still. Yeah, sort of getting swallowed by the pack a little bit. So they are out on a start loop now, which will thin them out before they head out onto the lap properly. They do that and just that's to actually make sure. A, a, a ski, ski slope uh, rider. Ski slope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, a very steep uh, section, uh, and they immediately are. That's, I think, I hope that's his teammate, at least. Uh, I wonder. No, yeah, Lilo's got the red sleeves oh, of yes, the yes, Swiss yeah. national champion. The number so three on his bike, yeah. Dario Lilo. Must but be a teammate. teammate of him, he had a technical problem and couldn't ride his bike anymore, so probably something with his chain. For the Davos squad, but um, yeah, they put them out on the start loop just to fin the numbers, so they're not heading into that. First bit of single track, four wide, but you can see Boishi just making himself big, but yeah. not as big as Carter Woods. Carter Woods here with the number two on his bike, leading. And we always say, Bart, when the tongue's out, you're really trying. When the tongue comes out, you're putting everything into it. But yeah, look, you can see how wet it is here in Monsey and Anne today. And Bart, there'll be some riders will have looked out the window this morning and gone, <laughs> great. Yes, they like it. And now for the first time here in this descent, the riders, they have to be a bit more carefully in the first lap. They have to find out how slippery everything is. The rocks, the roots, you can see here, the soil. Actually, it's not so muddy yet, because yes. they didn't have any rain the last uh, days in training. Uh, yesterday afternoon, a, a little shower came down, but it almost didn't affect uh, the course at all. But now, yeah, definitely after some rides uh, on, on this course, the mud will be there. Yeah, so it is. Javier de Oliveira Pereira, who leads in ahead of Amos, Boishi, Woods, Leland, Hedima, Martin. Riley's in the mix, as in Muzi. And here at the bottom of this uh, downhill, there's actually a, a river gap, and the riders have to jump over. Yeah, that, that, river, that, 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 river may be, <laughs> <laughs> that river may be slightly deeper today than it was yesterday after the rain we've had here last night. Rattled the windows last night. Yeah, next to our house, uh, that they came yeah, like a small river down next to the road. And as I say, it, it was kind of boiling up all week, and we thought it might arrive early yesterday and affect the, uh, the downhill, but mercifully it managed to swerve most of it there were showers earlier on the day for the semi-finals and then it kind of dried out the, the track stabilized um ahead of the finals so we got a good race there and kind of well if you're going to get a massive deluge of rain you want it at the start of the day don't you so the track remains equal for yeah, for everyone that's and yeah that's what we like what you like to see especially also in downhill well, Amos and Boishi then making a break for it out yeah. front by four seconds ahead of Carter Woods. There he is. Carter Woods back to the leaders now on third place. The three of these guys part towards the end of the season, really establishing themselves as the, the fastest trio. Yeah, a very strong riders. Watch Woods, w watch Woods wind the par on here and just bring him back in. Yeah, a little bit of time for him as well to uh, take his bottle, small drink, to, to relax. And they're not going full speed yet. Also, they checking out each other, checking out the course a little bit. And you see here, a little bit slippery in that corner, foot out for Carter Woods. Yeah. Also, the rear wheel of Rayleigh Amos went away a little bit in that corner. Anyone who's ever ridden a mountain bike in the wet knows that there's a lot of... There's a lot of trusting your eyes and trusting your own judgment as to how much grip there is and yeah. committing to things and pushing in, pushing into soft ground to, to generate grip. But on the first lap of a race... Yeah, you have to find out how it feels, how it is. Uh, and probably also a couple of riders, they change to mud tires. Actually, this course doesn't become really muddy, but just slippy. I mean, the roots and rocks, and it has a lot of rock, rocky sections. They become very slippery. Yeah, and that's the problem with mud tires. They work great in mud, but put them on wet rock less no, so uh, they don't yeah, like yeah, it. The, 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 yeah, mud tires have a little bit bigger knob, so they, 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 they move a little bit more, and then the feeling on rocks is actually worse instead of like a normal tire with lower knobs. Then the, the compound is even more important. Yeah, for, the compound, the actual, uh, the actual softness of the rubber but you can see uh, Riley Amos on those tan wall 
sidewalls on his tires. I think that is the full mud setup. Well, you'd have to assume it's a full mud setup given the conditions out there today. Yeah, Relay was now leading. And this is a long, steep climb. Actually, a completely new course here again in the Monsignan. Some of the sections the riders have been ridden before, but different directions they go now. And uh, yeah, in, in general, it's a completely new course. Also, the here, the start, finish, that's new from uh, the previous years. Randy Amos took the short track win in Snowshoe, West Virginia, last time out, and then got on the podium in the cross-country Olympic race. But, Bart, as they uh, get ready to head out onto the lap properly you now, a really, really tough track in Monsignan. And we always say the track is tough, but here, this has to be the <laughs> hardest of the year, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, if you, if you, we always say when you can win in, in Monsignan, it means a lot. Uh, you are one of the best riders of the world. Uh, oh, you can because see the them. conditions in Monsignan are always hard. There yeah. is Lilo. There you, Lilo, yes, there he is with the yellow uh, body Jersey. vest. Yeah. And Stunis van Maan in the lime green from the Netherlands, also he is off his bike. Actually, it's a really nice design course. And also a lot of opportunities to overtake each other. Well, at the front, it looks like Riley Ramos. Ramos is putting the pressure on for track. Immediately, in the first full lap, pushing hard on this long climb. And actually, they're still maybe halfway now. But this is a long climb. And I guess even on the top for the riders, it's hard to stay on their bike, to ride the bike. Because some of the, the parts are freshly made. I don't know if they stay good packed if it's green like this at the um, moment. We are going to see a mini version of what we saw in the downhill racing yesterday in that whenever you take tires that are full of dirt, full of mud, and then you ask them to grip on really smooth wet rock like right here. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't do much, no. <laughs> Reese Wilson, UCI World, former UCI World Champion, actually messaged us during the, the downhill saying that we needed to stress that. He said, because in Mont saint Anne, tires full of dirt, hitting wet rock, it's like yeah. hitting glass. It's he ice. Said, it's just yeah. unbelievable how it's, little grip there is. It is, and yeah, especially in the, in the next part, which will come up very soon, you will see some uh, really rocky parts, some big rocks where the riders have to go over it, uphill, but also downhill. And then it's very slippery with so much mud. And they bring also more mud on, on these sections, on these big rocks. And it might be very slippery later. I'll tell you the one I always hate about riding in the wet is whenever you take your hands off your grips for the first time to get a drink or something and you put them back on, all of a sudden the grip's wet. Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> it's horrible, yes. We see also a couple of riders without uh, gloves. Yeah, sometimes that gives even a better grip on your, yeah. um, on your handlebar. And also, yeah, you, you easily can clean your hands when you have no gloves. But yeah, most of the time, riders have full finger gloves. There's Here is Dario Lilo. Lilo. Yes, there he is. He's getting the move on now. Lilo knows that. He has to, yes. If he wants to get second in the overall, he needs to somehow get ahead of Carter Woods. But as we've seen this year, that sentence, he one of the hardest to execute in under 23 racing. He was very strong in a certain time of the year, in the season, in the middle part, around uh, Lanzerheide, I remember. But now, here at the end of the year, he's struggling a little bit more with his uh, form he had before. It feels like the rider on screen at the minute, their forms have kind of crossed, haven't they? Because at the start of the year, Riley Amos, super strong down that descent, just hops the back end round that tree beautifully. At the start of the year, we were expecting to see him higher up. He's off the bike and running now. Yeah, these sections, they are even hard Look to make it in the dry. But uh, now with the wet, yeah, yeah, I expected already uh, something like this. And now for the first time here on that big rock. Big rock drop in, big roll in into this chunky rock section. Let's More see Riley Amos through. Slippery it. rocks over here. Really confident, nicely done, yeah. but right on the edge of that duckboard. That bridge and more rocks. Let's see how slippery it is also with these roots. And there are roots everywhere. There are, yeah. It's a beast of a course here. We, we came here. They talked a lot about the changes that they'd made to the, the famous Mont Saint Anne course. They change, you know, they change up little things every year. Got but the roots. Huge changes this year for it. There's that river crossing. Carter Woods yeah, foot out. Oh. <laughs> Rear wheel sliding. Yeah, not even if it's. If, if it's not a rock or a route, then it's an off-camber section. Oh, Bart, we're, into, we're in for a fantastic day of cross-country racing. This will be so great skills, to watch. Skills today means everything. Yeah. You have to be one with your bike. And, and uh, also this year, it's a very steep section where really aims this right now. He's taking it a bit higher up for a better straight line down. Right, the Amos Perfect. is looking great Perfect. through this stuff, yeah. 
Adrian Brachy, here he comes. Also perfect for him. Not that yeah. far off, four seconds only. Still but in touch. They are distancing Carter Woods in third place. He's having a nightmare here by yeah, the look of it. He's more struggling with uh, these sections. He's a big, big guy. It's more difficult for him. And this is also the famous rock garden down that we always have here on the on the course in Monsendan. But no, uh, no the Beatrice this year. Not, not, no, no, that's not in uh, this year. But they have, I mean, this the climb they have here will be before. I mean, the, the, the climb before La Beatrice. This climb is similar. Just La Beatrice. Oh, they've made it every bit every bit as hard as La Beatrice was. But let's jump on the drone for a great shot of Riley Amos wow. just sliding around that corner. Very slippery. And at that's the, the thing, Bart. Um, anyone watching in the UK where where I ride push bikes, you know that feeling of it doesn't have to be pretty. If you on clip and the bike's still moving forward and you're sliding, it's all right. And it's just being comfortable. Being uncomfortable, I think, is the trick today. See that river now? It's full of water. Yesterday there was just a little stream, but now yeah. full of water. It is in swell. Amos leading the way here, looking super, super strong. Five seconds now ahead of Boashi. Yeah, similar conditions as we had maybe in uh, Andorra this year in Valnoort. Yeah, that's true. Very cold on 2,000 meters elevation. You had the elevation there as well, which just made it extra horrible. Yeah, and very cold conditions. Actually, it's not super cold outside, maybe 15 uh, degrees, more like that. So uh, actually for riding, it's OK, but the rain. It's been beautiful all week. It's been a lovely oh, week to be in Quebec. Perfect battle we had. Yeah, it's lovely. Amos looking absolutely superb here. Yeah, looking good. He's won with his bike on this course. And as I say, Bart, there will be riders like Riley Amos who are technically superb, who have had to watch the big powerhouses like Carter Woods go up the road at times this year. And whenever they see conditions like this, they'll know, OK, I can make a difference here with my bike skills. Yeah, yeah that's how they do. I remember with Jolanda Neff, for example, here in Monsendan. If it's like this, she loves to ride yeah. in these conditions. Nino Scherter as well loves this place in the wet. Goes yeah. very, very Ma well. Matthias Flückiger, he's wild in the descent. So when it's wet and muddy and slippery, he doesn't. Nino Scherter on that descent in snowshoe last week, where he overtook six people. And yeah. he, he told me, he just told me about how he recons and how he, he makes sure he sees every rock he can in case there's a puncture or a chance of a mechanical. And I said. Did you ridden that line on the right-hand side of the track that you went past six people? No, that was just full send. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> yeah, sometimes they have the feeling into the race that they have to do it, and they do it, and it, and it works. I think you overtook six people in that one descent on the street. Yeah, if it's a new line where, where nobody has been ridden before, and it works. Yeah. And you see it at the latest moment, why not? Nino Scherter coming up later on in the broadcast, of course, right now. Amos and Boashi doing it out front. Trek Factory Racing and Trinity Racing respectively. Two seconds of difference between them. And then it's 19 seconds back to Carter Woods now, Bart. Even not that much. I mean, now there's another section of the course that's coming which will suit him maybe a bit more. And they will see the riders in front of him as well for a long time on that next climb. That might motivate him to come back to the leaders. And here we see a rider off his bike. Something went wrong. Oh, running in cross-country race shoes as well. It's yeah. not a pleasant experience. These shoes are not made for walking, and especially not on, on the hard-packed uh, sections like these. There's a song, no, in, there's no a song in there somewhere, Bart. <laughs> no, no, no change for him it was. That yeah. was the main reason why he was walking and there's running. Riley Amos then out front. Yeah, together. Adrian Boashi right behind him. The clear lenses on the glass has given us. And that's Carter Woods on third place with the number two on his bike. Perfect view. So that's that must have been from earlier on because our yes, timing screens are saying 23 yeah, yeah, yeah. seconds and is a difference. The, right, the leaders again, Rayleigh really Amos with Adrian Brachy. He's taking it a bit more carefully. Brachy, let's see how muddy it already is here in these corners. That's the river gap over there. Better the riders jump over easily, no problems. You, but you need to have a little bit of speed. Yeah, you can't really. It's like a few meters, that gap, wide. And you don't want, yeah, too slow and you risk hanging a wheel up and puncturing or... So Carter Woods has got rid of the glasses. Yeah, that's another thing. I mean, your vision in, on, these, on days like these, it's very difficult. There's almost no vision with the glasses, so you have to change them. Cedric Gracia, I remember we, we had a, a joke sometime this year, but they should make uh, riding glasses with tear-offs. 
Yeah. Cedric Grassi yeah. makes them. He's going to get us some. Really? He's promised us some for oh, the winter. Yeah. Cross country. <laughs> yeah. He said the tear, the tear offs are biodegradable. Okay. It's, yeah. But I remember back in the days we had also a uh, eye wheel zone where you could change glasses. In yeah. the, we have you feet. told me that before and I was amazed by that. But as a man who's a bit of a, a magpie for riding but I glasses, riders, I quite like the idea. I think the riders will still do it, uh, changing glasses during the race. But of course, yeah, it, it's just a matter of time and they are dirty again. It's a really unique feeling to ride in mountain bikes in the winter without glasses whenever you're the next day when it feels like your eyeballs are made of sandpaper. It's a really horrible, horrible thing. So glasses definitely help it. But they conditions do. like today, whenever your your body's at maximum exertion, giving out a lot of heat on the front of the glasses is very, very cold and very wet. They can steam up very easily and disrupt your vision or even worse, if you have a crash or you're behind a rider, even you can get a lot of dirt flicked up onto them and then it becomes hard to see. But here come the leaders. Yeah, really Amos and Adrian Bragi. Would you change it? Really Amos also, he's doing something. I think with his gloves, taking off his gloves. There's Carter Woods, 26 seconds back now for the big Canadian. If it's sometimes not that easy when they are wet, they're very tight to take these off, but there's a little bit of time around the, the, the start finish area. Bjorn Riley's second wheel still has the rain jacket on, trying to stay warm. We did see that. Uh, yeah, Tobias Lindelund, so you're leading this group. We did see that in Andorra with uh, Flukiger and Mona Mitterwalner, were both wrapped up nice and warm, and it seemed to help. Slowing down a little bit here around the finish straight. Amos still well within grasp of that second place in the overall as well. He's just he's just 50 points shy off Carter Woods. So that battle is shaping up nicely. Third place at the minute in the overall, Dario Lilo. He's uh, he's he's quite far back off these leaders. Let's just get a check. Lilo's 19th at the minute, so, yeah, so he needs to be yeah. up in this fight at the front, really, if he wants to take that second place. Yeah, with that uh, in mind, really, Amos will take at least uh, a step on the podium to add in GC. Cedric's just text to say that those glasses are in the post. It's good to hear. But it is Riley Amos, Adrian Boisier. Doing the business out front ahead of Carter Woods. Bjorn Reilly here. Bjorn Reilly. He's been good this year, Riley, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, also many times in front of the race. Bjorn Reilly, sixth. Waiting for the future, the, the track future racing team. Sixth in the uh, cross country short track earlier in the weekend. Good showing from him again. Really, he's been up in that sort of top five, top six all year. Riley, really consistent. Giannis Musi from France. Yeah, great showing from him. Yeah, we, don't, we, don't, we haven't seen him that much this they head, year. They head back in the woods, a little on clip and... Uh, yeah, different line here Amos. for... It's starting to get really churned up in there, Bart. And that happens in cross-country racing as well, on a wet track, whenever it just kind of deteriorates, grip becomes up at a premium. Yeah, sometimes a little bit more outside line, it's less steep. A little bit more grip. This, that climb there just was, on uh, is that miserable. Lilo with the number three on his bike. Lilo then. Yeah, to at the moment in the uh, overall standings, but and it's like this. Needs to get himself forward and into the fight, Dario Lilo, if he wants a chance of getting second in the overall today. That climb, absolutely measurable. Yeah, <laughs> the switch banks, steep, and they're becoming more slippery. Oh, it's look now, it looks good again for Adrian Brachy now. Looks strong, doesn't Pushing he? Pushing hard. As we've seen him do all season, there's Carter Woods, and that is deflating, Bart, whenever you're at the bottom of a climb like that, and you can look up it. Yeah, uh, but it still motivates him, 30 seconds only. But the gap becomes a little bit bigger, he lost a little, a little bit of time. But there's also some pressure behind him. Yeah, Riley to seems hard. to be bringing this group of four across to the back of Carter Woods, so... There's Gutierrez Prieto for Canyon Collective. Had a great time off it in Snowshoe last weekend. 
Luca Martin. Yeah, there'll be a factory racing team rider. Nearly, so nearly won in Val de, Fa Val de Sole, oh, excuse me, Trentino. Yeah, that it didn't happen for him. He's looking good. I think he loves these conditions. He's a very technical rider as well, very strong. And see here the ski slope, this uphill here. Oh. The mud is already there. It gets more muddy with every lap again. Yeah, the, by the yeah. time the elite riders get to this bit, it's going to be done. Later on this afternoon, of course, starting with the elite women. This difficult yeah. balance, this part where you've got to make the decision on whether it's quicker to run or ride. Yeah, my suggestion is maybe step off your bike a little bit earlier and start running instead of try to keep on your bike and make yeah. it. You can see make it more she sort of you stalled lost more there. time. Yeah. yeah, the old cycle cross trick, but then. You, you then fill those clipless shoes full of mud and getting clipped back into these small cross-country pedals. Tricky. It's more difficult. But uh, I mean, also these riders said actually they never has to run. They're always riding their bike, even when it's very steep. So yeah, they're not really used to do it. And instead of cycle course, where there always are running sections in it. On and off the bike all race, yeah, aren't yeah, they? Yeah. But also these days they're jumping over all these uh, yeah. obstacles. Even if it's half a meter height, uh, it doesn't matter that at all for them. Yeah, mountain bikers just have to worry about river crossings. Bjorn Riley looks like he's broken free of that group behind him and is heading towards the front now. Riley Amos off and running up this climb. Yeah, it's going fast, even if he's running. Looking good. Yeah, and imagine yeah, your heart rate reached uh, the highest what you can have here on the, uh, the end of the climb. And then you've got to navigate this stuff. Precisely how he does it. Pashi. A bit slower up there on foot. Yeah, he lost a little bit of time. Carter Woods now, we're not that far behind uh, Adrian Brashi. Also, he is off the bike running. You're right, Bart, though. It's such a... I think you need to... You need to ride mountain bikes to really understand how tough a sport this is in that when you get to the top of that climb and it feels like your heart is about to explode out through the front of your chest <laughs> and then you've got the most technical bit of the course yeah, that that's you've got how to, it is. Yeah, that's you've got to the make all the mental decisions you've got to choose your line commit to it do all yeah. the right things your hands and yeah. feet yeah, it makes much more difficult if you reach the, your highest heart rate and then make the downhill perfectly here is Janus Moussi from France he loves these conditions, must be. Yeah, great showing from Missy. There's Leland behind him. Sorry, correction. Yeah, there's uh, uh, Barroso. Barroso behind him. Oh, oh look, at, look at the impact going into that front wheel of that trek of Riley Amos. I think Amos has given these descents a really good go, Bart. You know, he thinks that maybe this is where he can make the time. Where's Boishy? Well, by our clocks, he's 21 seconds behind him. Almost there is Boishy. Yeah, also still riding these sections, even in the mud and in the slippery conditions. Yeah, drop a seat post down as, as well for him here on sections like that. Very steep down. Amos knocks his saddle down in the frame on the dropper post. You get the feeling as well that although he was happy, there's that river cross. <laughs> it's a lot of water in now. <laughs> you can throw it in your sorrow. And yeah. splash it. You get the feeling as well, just looking at the body language as he crossed the line last Sunday, that although he was happy with that short track win, he had been kind of backing himself to do the double in snowshoes. So, a bit of fuel in the fire for today for Riley Amos. You see Boishi across the river. Sometimes with a river crossing spark, they can help to try and take a bit of the excess mud off the bike and the tires, clear them a yeah, wee bit. Especially your drivetrain, it has to stay clean. That's very important for precisely shifting. Uh, luckily, I mean, it's not that it's not really muddy. I mean, it's slippery, but not like clay when it's loading your bike. Sometimes we see races, for example, in um, in Leogang. There the, there the ground is very sticky and, and then it loads your bike and your drivetrain and then it gets more difficult oh. and you try to clean your drivetrain all the time. You can see that, that helps with crossing a river. Front wheel just sliding around underneath Riley Amos but 
we always say it, especially in the downhill, the racers will tell you they want one of two things, a fully wet track or a fully dry track. It's whenever the weather's in between or it's drying that the conditions are more unpredictable, the bikes fill with dust and dirt a lot more. So although they look really, really muddy, the amount of moisture out there will keep the dirt flowing largely off these bikes. Yeah, on deep sections like this, it's going fast without any problems. Randy Amos fancies this one today. He's out front currently by 21 seconds out of Adrian Boishy. Carter Woods is third, so Amos putting himself in the driver's seat for second place in that UCI World Cup overall battle. Just 50 points of difference to him and Woods. Amos in fourth for yeah. the minute, Woods second. Carter Woods still on third place in this race. Oh, now catched by Bjorn Rayleigh. Here they are, Carter Woods, Bjorn yeah, Riley. So Riley now, is Riley going to be the joker in the pack here who's going to take potential points away from Carter Woods in that overall contest by finishing ahead of him? Early days yet, only lap two out of five. Yeah, Riley also riding for the Track Future Racing team, but as a, like a body vest, so to keep him warm. Yeah, a lot of time for that Trek Future Racing squad designed to develop and foster those, uh, foster those young talents. Bring them yeah, up. Most of the time they are based in um, Heiming in Austria, where they train together, living together, and doing the races from there on. But uh, now when we are overseas here in USA last week and Canada this week, and after this race, probably they all go back home. It's a tough, it's a tough ask bar, isn't it? I mean, this this sport it demands so much commitment, you know, as a person on and off the bike. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. Also, there's a lot of traveling involved the whole season long, but also all that traveling, yeah, makes you more exhausted at the end of the season. It costs a lot of energy, uh, time differences where you have to deal with. So that, for that reason, also many of the U.S. and Canadian riders they stay in Europe for a long time, and also, of course, from Aust uh, Australia or New Zealand. Zealand. They have a second house or the team organized accommodation for these riders to stay in Europe. There's Dario Lilo then. Lilo. With Luke Wittmann in front of him. Currently in 18th, so he's got one place back, but needs to get a move on really if he wants to get to the front of this one. Adrian Brashi. Slip and slide over here. Using his brakes. Well, yeah. can that track getting really, really beaten up through that section already. And that's just before that river gap. You need a little bit of speed to make it. Will the elite riders who are out later on this afternoon, Bar, will they will they go and do a recce lap? Will they go out and look at sections and that? They, they ask at least these riders uh, how the course is, uh, how it feels, uh, what kind of tires they have to ride. Um, yeah, <sighs> maybe some of the sections to, to inform them a little bit how it feels that's yeah they're not going out for a recon lap anymore actually there's no time even for that maybe just a little bit around to have a look in the forest right Amos great through those berms are really awkward those berms are quite tight for those bermed corners it's very easy to lose speed on them to miss the apex but Amos cracking on at the front of this one 25 seconds the gap back to Adrian Boashi currently so Doing the Samara Maxwell trick, adding the second here, a second there. Yeah, that works as well. Over for the, the course of five the, laps, it adds up. For the overall standings, it is. Is we go. Strong right for him. Game was looking good. Into the feet zone, taking a new bottle. Taking his time as well, new glasses. New glasses, yep. yeah. There you go, you set apart, you predicted it. Yeah, it. It's so nice to have clear vision again and protect your eyes against the mud. At least now he's leading, so no uh, splashing from the rider in front of him. And his glasses, that helps a little bit, but still also your front wheel most of the time. Yeah. Brings a, little, a lot of dirt and mud up. There's Bjorn Riley. Yeah, Bjorn Riley. I think now he's on third. Riley's he is in third by R. Clocks, Cl R. Clocks in here. Excuse me, by 10 seconds from Carter Woods. So the Canadian rider who was so so hopeful of a home win is seeing his chances of that wash away in front of him as the rain continues to fall in Mont Saint Anne. 
Adrian Brashi, second place. He is your leader. The man from Durango, Colorado. Plenty of mountain bike race and heritage in that part of the world, Riley Amos. Really part of this new wave of young American racers coming through in cross country. Boishy, Riley, another one of them. Riley has caught Riley. up to the back of Adrian Boishy here. Strong right for Bjorn Riley now. Carter Woods crosses the line, 38 seconds back off the leader. Yeah, he lost a little bit of time again, fourth place. That means a lot for the overall standings, especially for Riley Amos. Many of these riders takes to win. Many of these riders heading to cyclocross after this part, because well, cyclocross starts next weekend, doesn't it? It starts next uh, weekend, just in the USA. Uh, Win Constance, it is. Uh, the track factory is uh, based, hometown. Yeah, some of the riders they do. I know uh, Puck Peterson from the Netherlands. Um, I don't know these young riders if they do cyclocross too. We laughed at uh, a couple of them earlier in the year. Puck Peterson said uh, after the cross country season she would take a good rest and then maybe race some cyclocross. <laughs> and I said, "How long is a good rest for you?" And she said, "Oh, no more than two weeks." Only she does. <laughs> uh, she does the next race. Uh, she does the cyclocross race next week, the, the World Cup, and then take a little bit, a little bit of time off. What in, a in talent! The, like, what a season what she's a season. had. Yeah, she had. Yeah, yeah. Took the title last Friday in short track as well. Yep, double titles, just like Alessandra Keller did last season for Puck Peterson. Yeah, but on her young age, oh. first time women elite, 21, Can 22. We... Yeah, just yeah, impressive. But also, we said it during the uh, during the podium celebrations, Bart. She's come into this sport, and you can see the respect and the affection that the other pros have for her as well. She's not just come in dominated and... No, no, no. So she's, she's made a lot of friends. She, she, yeah, she definitely does. She's riding around with everybody. She loves to ride her bike. She loves to ride technical sections. She's helping also other riders uh, yeah, to, 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 to go around uh, carefully and precisely. So, uh, no, she has definitely a lot of friends around her. Such a young age, but such a great champion, Puck Peterson. Well, speaking of champions, one of them's just been overtaken. Bjorn Riley. Bjorn Riley's coming to the front of this one, second place now. Adrian Brasi. And Carter Woods isn't that far off, you know, so I just wonder, maybe, maybe Bushy in a bit of trouble here, Bart, which we're not yeah, used to he, saying. He dropped back a little bit. 30 seconds between the number one and this chasing group. Whenever you've got a title locked up in the bag, can it be a difficult one to lift yourself for a race like this? It felt a little bit to me what happened also with Puck Peterson in the short track. I mean, she had to be in front of uh, Alessandra Keller and suddenly into the race you saw that it should happen. And then she dropped back as... Oh, she still finished fifth. Yeah, she's, she's still on the podium, obviously. <laughs> she, she not really <laughs> dropped back, but you could see it. It was not... The, the same intention as winning, uh, try to win a race. Well, I get it because, you know, you spend all year focusing on one thing and then you achieve yeah. that thing, but you still yeah. got to go out and do the thing that and you've been, you know, trying to get points from. And it seems to be now also for uh, Rayleigh Amos, I mean for um, Adrian Brasi. Of course, he's leading these standings and he will take the, the title also when, when he's not winning this race. And just that little bit of extra pressure, uh, attention. Washi's well, worst result was in the cross country Olympic, 15th in Nova Mesto Namarave. After that, there was an 11th in there. After that, solid top threes for the whole season, including a boatload of wins. He's, he's such, such a talent. Yeah, he's been absolutely superb, Washi, this season. This man hasn't been bad either. Riley Amos, just that. The start of the start of the year was a bit lumpy for him. Yeah, it took a bit, of, a little bit of time to find his good form, and now he's very smart. You saw he was still having his speed, jumped off his bike and started running it. That's how you have to do it. But Bar, you have to a, keep the speed. As a racer, you'd rather end the year strong than start strong and end it badly, <laughs> heading into the off season. Yeah, like uh, Dario Lilo now is struggling a little bit with his form. And then the races are really difficult, really hard. A lot of thinking time as well, a lot of time to be alone with your thoughts. And yeah, if you start thinking during the race, that's not, not good at all. No, no. <laughs> hard so sections over here. Amos, off and running again. Amos. Yeah, but very smart how he does it. It still goes at a good speed. Even he has to get off and on his bike all the time. And no problems at all for him on these rock gardens, rock sections. 
and these are very slippery good traction very bumpy as well really good down through there he must Oh, Riley has caught the back of Boisier and just yep. tips off the bike. Boisier Won't cost him too much time. It's so steep there. Was that the old cross-country tip over the old stall? Yeah, it could be, yeah. Yeah, it could be. be. <laughs> Anytime I mention that to you, there's a little smile comes over your face. Like, I don't think it's alien for you. <laughs> I mean, they're definitely battling for their positions. Uh, sometimes it helps so much if you are in front of a rider, especially here. There's no, no place to overtake each other. So Riley Amosy just has oh. to sit Bjorn Riley and wait. On clips one foot, lets the bike slide. Yeah, there's a little bit of traction in between these roots and rocks where you have to push hard. And that's what. Oh, look, Riley. you see how slick it is there. <laughs> Both <laughs> axles sliding out from underneath Riley Amos. That's on the, the ski slopes. The open sections. Oh, Bart, this is making me excited to head back to the Tweed Valley and Did ride some bikes. You see also how precisely and careful the riders are on these uh, rocky sections. Riley Amos, no problems at all. And it's that just, you, you work a lot more when the conditions are like this, don't you? You balance the bike on the yeah, brakes, you balancing. change your weight a lot, you unclip, yeah. you clip again. Sometimes you unclip your foot, but you don't even take it off the pedal. It's just ready to go down if you need it. And Especially these dropper seat posts will help a lot for a better balance on your bike. And that's what you need to have. And another foot out very quickly. Pushing again. Stretching his legs. A little bit of time to recover. Is keeping warm? I'm guessing that's not a factor they're working that hard. But can you get cold out there? Yeah, I saw a couple of rides already. They were yeah, showing that their hands were cold, especially when it's wet. Yeah, you get easily cold at all. Circulation, yeah, your fingers. Yeah, yeah. yeah your fingers, uh, and when you have no gloves on it anymore, yeah, you easily get cold hands, and that's not what you like to have. It's really annoying. It's really annoying, isn't it? Cold hands on a mountain bike when you're trying to break, and oh, toes as well. I got cold toes, Bart. John Riley, second and third place now, behind Adrian Brashi. Yeah, he's just sort of held station a wee bit here, Riley. He's caught up to Boishe and. Yeah, now they stay together, 33 seconds behind this man, Riley the, Amos. The only, yeah, I mean, you, you don't want to say it, you don't want to give it the commentator's curse, but Amos, he has suffered from punctures this season. He's had a few, he's been in good positions before, and all of a sudden, he's come into shot with no air in his tires, and so easy to do on a day like today, whenever the bike's not always on the perfect line, and you're having to sort of adapt uh, yeah, and make things up as you go. At least the, the speed is a bit slower, so there's not that hard impacts on your tires, on your rims, on your wheels, uh, when the conditions are like these. But uh, yeah, when it's dry and high speed and the rider's not holding back, yeah, it's easily done on, the, on a course like this. We saw a lot of flat tires in uh, training the last few days. Not as many as we did in the junior downhill. That was unbelievable. Never seen as many wheels and tires and everything. Broken wheels oh. and rims. <laughs> every it, time. It again. was like the mid 90s all over again. <laughs> they were going everywhere. But, but I'm surprisingly. What, what is it? Is it the tires? Is it the rims are not strong well, enough? Is it, it the riders are way too fast? Is it the course? It's a combination of all the things. And downhill though, they're 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 often uh, gluing the tires onto the rim which means whenever you get a big enough impact and the tire can't take it and the tire lets go it takes the rim with it often ah, yeah, yeah. but mainly the going too fast thing that's <laughs> generally and of course it's way too rough <laughs> it's only material bark you can only fight science for so long but <laughs> at least it's it's, uh, it, it's a good feedback for the technology and to improve Look, the, I, the quality and the, the strength as we see riley is he getting past boishi here yeah yeah, no, different, Boishy, different line just fighting for back. yeah, and we're seeing that in front of us as well. You know, these brands they spend money on mountain bike racing because there is no better place to develop the products they're going to sell. You yeah, race well, on Sunday, you sell on Monday. <laughs> That's <laughs> no, it. what these riders do is also a lot of testing for all the all the brands what they have on their bike, the parts. 
Yeah, there's nothing harder on bikes than racing. It's just absolutely brutal. It's full testing. You can't replicate it either. It's one of those things that an no, engineer no, can put is. this stuff on his bike and head out for no. a two or three hour bike ride. No. It's not the same as these guys smashing their way around Mont Saint Anne. None, right. none of these guys go uh, for right in these conditions. No, <laughs> no. They wait when the sun is out again. You don't get many engineers putting white socks on on a day like this either. And see how muddy it is. Here we go. Look at and that. That's what you need to have good traction on a yeah. course like this. The tire looked like it was hooking up well through yeah, that yeah, stuff yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Right, he aims also. He's looking 33 good. seconds into the green here, and he's looking like he's kind of figured this track out now, and yep. he's riding his lines. That track's Perfectly. gripping. That's a good feeling, Bart. Yeah, if it goes well, if it goes smooth, even if you have, if you go on and off your bike a couple of times on these climbs, doesn't matter. Big the gap, gap is still there. Big gap between fourth and fifth, forming the Carter Woods, Luca Martin. So, looks like. As we see Bjorn Riley now. I would say Carter, Carter Woods on fourth place. He's still in touch with uh, Adrian Brashi yeah. for that uh, second place where Bjorn Riley now riding is. Yeah, Riley not in that uh, competition for second place in the overall. No, but he can catch take point, the, the he can, points away. He can yeah. take points away, yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's always, there's always some days, whenever it comes down to a final round points battle, there's always a rider who's not yeah. involved in it, who fancies <laughs> just getting in the mix. Yeah. Great to see. There's nothing what you can do against uh, these things. Yeah, Gaetan, Woods. Gaetan Vijay in the downhill yesterday, up and amongst it. He was that guy. There's Carter Woods, foot Fourth out. Fourth place. When that right hand were up. Yeah, looks like he felt his rhythm in these conditions too now. I'm just looking out the window of the commentary booth and I can see, we can see into the pits from where we are and I can see two tents over and then there is just a wall of water behind them. So it's going to be a wet one all day here in Mont Saint Anne. But if you're sat at home or sat in the commentary booth, not it's, so bad. it's pretty not good so bad. racing, it's not too bad, yeah. <laughs> but I know we had that one in Leogang that leaked. That was really bad, that did get really serious quite quickly. But that, That's dangerous with all the technology here inside. Yeah, yeah, we thought it was funny until we saw the power sockets on the floor at our feet, but here he comes, Riley Amos into the tech again. feed zone. Yeah, new glasses again, every time again, every lap again. No bottle. Actually, with these, in these conditions, the riders don't drink that much. I was going to say... It's a risk of not having enough energy at the end of the race to you, so they have to take some gels to them. Otherwise, normally the, the energy is also in, into the drinks. But if they don't drink enough, they don't get the, the energy to them. I was going to say, it's something that, you know, I've, I've had happen to me on... Uh, 28 seconds and a gap yeah. back to Bjorn Riley. I've had happen to me on both mountain bike and road rides. Whenever it's colder and it's wet and your brain's that focus on how cold and wet you are, you forget to drink, you forget to eat, and then all of a sudden you're in trouble. Yeah, you are in trouble. Uh, yeah. That's uh, important for the riders. And that's what really Amos does right now, taking a gel. Two more laps. Two more laps, lap four out of five for Riley Amos, looking absolutely superb here. The gap, 26 seconds last time. We'll see what it is at the line. Yeah, but he, uh, he gained five, he gained six seconds, Bjorn Riley. Bjorn Riley, there, Riley, there yeah. it is, in the form of the season so far. Two more laps, I mean, it's not over yet. It's not over yet. 24. 24, so there's another two gone. He almost brought it back with 10 seconds, this lap. Well, we have seen him. He does like it tough. Does like the conditions tough, Riley. He's certainly getting them today. Poishy, 40 seconds back now of Amos. Let's get that gap to Carter Woods behind him, though. That will be an interesting one. Oh, soggy, wet. Yeah, you see also the lap times, they're increasing a little bit to 12, 20, the fastest lap time in the beginning. Now around 13 minutes, so 40 seconds slower. So there That's is, a lot. There is Carter Woods. Also for him, a gel. That, that can be tough as well, Bart. Fumbling for things with yeah. cold hands. Yeah, your but most of the time, they're, they, they are already a little bit open, the gels. That, that's what they do they're before the start, so that they are easily uh, can take them. Carter Woods, fourth place at the minute, a minute and four seconds back off the lead. Look at Martin. Look at Martin, Fifth place. looking strong. Yeah. He's pushing hard. He's got that Flukiger style though, hasn't he? He always, yes, looks, yes, he always yes, looks like he's revving hard. Very straight up on his bike, yeah. but very fast in the descents, on technical descents. And that's definitely what it here is in Monsenden today. 
and it's wet and muddy, slippery. He's also riding a little bit wide on the grass, but it's a little bit more grippy. And all that's doing is making the grass that they're on disappear. And for the races later on today, it will just be an absolute slip and slide. Yeah, the course gets uh, worse. It's so much riding on it, so many categories. Yep, chewing it up. And there is the man doing most of the chewing at the minute, Riley Amos. He's been great, absolutely yeah, fantastic today. You see how soft the ground is, how muddy it is. He's getting muddier every lap again. Yeah, Bjorn Riley not that far off. There he you is. You still can see him in front of him. A couple of hairpins back. I think he's fast in the descents, Bjorn Riley. Well, a pair, a pair, a pair of Rileys out front. Yeah, it's Riley Amos more, and Bjorn Riley. Yeah, one is from the Trek Factory Racing Team, and this is the Trek Future Racing Team, the development team. Trek will be happy with this one. Yeah. We are going to be missing Evie Richards uh, for the Elite Women's Race, and she just went too deep in the short track. So this one will lift the mood in the camp if it finishes the way it looks like it's about to. Boishi in third place at the minute. UCI World Cup overall title for Cross Country Olympic locked up. I expect also a lot from Yolanda Neff later today on this course yeah. in these conditions from Neff really buoyed by that podium last time out as well she said it was like a win carter woods running yes yeah, start running very early actually maybe mm -hmm. he made a little bit of a mistake and then it's very hard to get on your bike again if it goes fast probably similar than riding his bike that's a long way to run that yeah, i is. wonder yeah. if wood may have a problem or is he just yeah it could be because you see luca martin he's riding much further yeah. this climb it's not normally a climb that we do see them often running on so i wonder like you can see how costs, little grip there yeah, is in the rear yeah, wheel yeah, there yeah. it costs also a lot of energy yeah, to stay on your bike and pushing hard and find your grip and see how he's sliding with his rear wheel yeah this this part is it's new made and with all the rain now with all this that riding on it it's got so worse Lilleland. Lilleland, great showing from him yeah, Tobias Lilleland from Denmark, another track future racing rider. Yeah, incredible. And then we have uh, Sabdiel Gutierrez from Mexico. Sabdiel Gutierrez in the purple kit. Lilleland, 29th in the overall as things stand. He's had some top tens in along the way. Yeah, definitely a mud tire here for these sections. Amos just tipping the glasses down towards the front of his nose to try and get some vision. Yeah, right still, over the top uh, yeah so the protection you still have, but, uh, but clear vision. It's clever. <laughs> as he just sets them back up again. Yeah. You can see the eyes of Adrian Boishi. And Bjorn Riley. He's so with that rain jacket, actually. I'm really surprised that it's not. It's too it, warm. It's not cold, cold out there. Again, very easy to say from a commentary uh, 15 booth. 15 degrees, I think. Yeah. It's not really cold. But maybe yeah, with all the rain all the time. Yeah. I think we, we, we will see more body vests also in the other categories. Here we see the mud. And there is what you would describe as a mud tire bar. Yeah. Grip in these conditions. That's what you need to have. Would you do anything with the pressures at all? Yes, tire pressure? Yeah, lower tire pressure, at least for more grip on these roots and rocks. And then you, with that you can play a little bit with tire pressure, but of course you need to have an insert to protect your tires for the impacts what it will have with a soft tire. But on the other hand, yeah, also the, the speed is not, yeah, it's, it's definitely lower than it normally is. There you see the effort of Riley Amos, the top three are the only riders on the same minute. Carter Woods, 1 minute 14 back, Luca Martin, 129, so that we saw. Woods often running up here. Yeah, you leader now on 18th place. He's more of the time all the time around that. Four minutes 12 off. This hasn't it's been the end of the year we expected from Lilo. He was so strong he in places so like Leo, Leo Gang. Yeah. Start of the year. And it was really. I, I think Lanzerheide it was too. Where, yeah. where we used. But star fade in a wee bit towards the end of the season. Alexander Houdima, the line kit. So, in terms of laps then, Riley losing, was three seconds quicker, excuse me, Boishi losing 15 on lap three. 
And if you said to Riley Amos at the start of this race, he'd be lapping 15 seconds quicker oh, than Adrian Bosch. You should have taken that, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, maybe he's, he loves to ride in conditions like this. He won uh, in uh, Andorra in very cold and wet conditions too. That's true. Yeah, so uh, very technical rider here. As you can see how smooth he goes on, on these sections. But we always say, Bart, I mean, we talk about 15 seconds being a big lead or a big margin to pull at the front of a bike race. You get it wrong down one of these sections, the crash you will have, 15 seconds will evaporate yeah, very, yeah, very quickly. Yeah. It looks like Boishy maybe just getting back in touch with Riley slightly now. Yeah, but Riley now at least he's in front again of uh, Adrian Boishy and looks like he's a little bit faster. He lost a little bit of time, I thought, in that climb to uh, Riley Amos, who's leading. But he's fast oh, in the descent. Boishy on clips and just yeah. gently does it through there. Not for Bjorn Riley, stays clipped in. Riley's looking fast here. And it's one of those but things. Also, his body, his body language, his, yeah. his position on the bike. He looks just, up for it. Yeah, he's ready for. But it's for one of those things that, like, it's kind of in you from when you first start riding mountain bikes. You either like riding in the mud or you don't. It's just one of those things that some people are better at than others, and other yeah. people have to work it, very it hard. It definitely has to do with your bike skills and also probably in what kind of area you where are you born. Grow up. Yeah, yeah, where you grew up. That's what I think too. Well. Adrian Boishy, he's lost a couple of bike lengths to Bjorn Riley, and he's got to work to get wow. the back. Carl Woods. Woods! Oh, down! That was going wrong right from the very, very top. Woods in trouble. He's down there. Medical staff look like they're heading down the wars, and as we see Riley Amos cleaning the cassette with that bottle. Wow, that was a really hard impact oh. against that tree. Uh, they're Carl horrible. Woods. Those crashes Ooh. that seem to last forever on that stuff are horrible. I mean, it's, a, it's a big rock over there where the riders have to go down. And there's no no chance to escape so if it goes have wrong. We just seen Carter Woods' chance of second place in the UCI World Cup overall fade. With that crash, we need to get a camera on him and see if he's up and moving again. Yeah, it would be interesting to see that, how he's feeling, how he's doing. The race goes on. Well, Luca Martin's gone past him, I can see from our screen in the booth. And these are points falling away for Carter Woods after that crash in the rock section. Bjorn Riley's currently second place, 31 yeah. seconds behind Riley Amos. Stay more like the same for him. Bjorn Riley on 31 seconds, second place. Are we going to see Carter Woods come through this shot? There he ah, is, no. Holding really the back. This could be all she wrote. At least he's standing again. At least he's up on his feet. The medical staff are there with him. There we go, Bart. Talk us through this one. Yeah, it, it went already wrong on top. You see his front wheel sliding away. Then he's oh. almost trying to keep it. And there's no, no, nothing to escape. And then he, he went so hard. I think he, even not against the tree, but I think he fell more on a rock with his yeah. hip. And it's a big drop over there. It's like a three meter height. It's a horrible it feeling that as well on a big rock section like that, and where you're sticking a leg out and you don't know where there's a hole. You don't know where your foot's going to go into and potentially cause you a really bad injury. It's, so it's a really hard landing over there. There is Carter Woods on the right hand side of your screen. Yeah, it looks like he and is going to yeah. be a DNF. I mean, these riders, they are taking it more outside. That's the, we call it more like a B line. It's, it's, it's still part of the same course. It's not, nothing specially taped, but uh, it's a bit wider. It's not, it's a little bit hit it fast though, it's not too bad. You it's not too bad at all, no, but riders, they're only practicing almost for the fastest line all the time. But at the end, yeah, it has to go right for the whole race and that didn't happen for well, Carter Wood we on that section. We did just mention how quickly it can go wrong. Yeah, 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 it, it, but that's for all these riders. They're all struggling and, and it goes right maybe a hundred of times, but then suddenly, yeah, a little bit of a mistake easily made. Over oh, that river cross in there. But I think also the setup, uh, what the riders have chosen uh, about, I think, mud tires, the, the right tires, that's definitely a, a big thing. Yeah, I think it's the worst place to crash. Yeah. Where Carter Woods did it. Oh, horrible feeling as well. Fall, because as you say, it was going wrong right from the top yeah, of that right rock. from the top, you saw the front wheel was sliding away. There was no, no escape anymore. So Woods had a lead of 50 points from Amos, and Riley Amos could be riding his way towards second place in the UCI World Cup overall with this win. There he is.
Bjorn Riley second. 34 seconds. It stay, stay more like the same all the time, around to 30 seconds, sometimes a bit closer. I think that's testament, sometimes a bit more. It's testament to the speed of this man that Bjorn Riley's come through the pack so fast, but he can't really put a dent on that lead of Riley Amos, who's been absolutely superb today. On these sections, it looks like Edwin Brashi is faster, coming back to uh, Bjorn Riley again. As a team manager, Bart, as well, you love to see this, don't you? You love to see a rider performing when the conditions are so tough. Yeah, it is. I mean, uh, he's, a, he's one of the most talented riders, like uh, a couple of these riders are. But uh, Riley Amos, uh, yeah, he's a very strong rider from the USA. He showed already his strengths in Andorra earlier this year, and now he does it again in these conditions. Strong also in short track. There is Dario Lilo cutting a forlorn figure. The Swiss rider, 17th now, so he's moved up another spot, but 4 minutes 43 yeah, back off the lead. 18 here. It's around that position he is. Two Americans have been the class of the field here in Canada. Riley Amos. <laughs> Bjorn, Bjorn. Too many Rileys. Bjorn Riley. your, it's your problem, Bart. There's too many Rileys out there. <laughs> Riley Amos and Bjorn Riley. Yeah, the two of them have been absolutely fantastic, both on the track machines. And what we see in here. Well, there's the bell. One to go. It's looking good for him. It's looking good for Riley Amos. But that, yeah, that yeah, crash yeah. of Carter Woods. Yeah, it shows how dangerous it is on this course. That you can't take your eyes off conditions like this for a second. So, as we always talk about, he'll just be ticking these sections off now. That's the last time I have to do that. That's the last time a little time bit of time that. for him to play with. Huh? A 30 seconds lead, and you know that as well. He will be informed by the team. Oh, you see also he had some problems with, I think, with the shifting or the lever from the dropper seat post. Yeah. He was using his right hand. And that can just be anything, that could be a bit of mud getting on there. Yeah, yeah. M many things work different in these conditions. 29 seconds. Did you like the mud part? Did you like the mud yeah, racing? I, I did. I yeah. thought you were going to say that. Severe conditions are always love. But actually, we had so many yeah, rain at the races in Montenegro. Yeah. It, even if it, it wasn't a, a, day, a rainy day like this, it was always a, a thunder, sh thunder shower or a thunder storm. We well, said it before during the short track. It's an old saying in downhill. There's only one thing guaranteed that it will <laughs> rain in Montenegro. <laughs> Yeah, in summertime, uh, yeah, there's almost a thunderstorm every day. Every day in the it evening. always boils up here, doesn't it? It always starts, the week starts very warm, and it boils and it boils and it boils yeah. and then it empties. Usually very bang warm on conditions, for the uh, Very humid and warm conditions in summertime. And this time of year, actually, it was still beautiful weather the last week. We're right on the banks of the St. Lawrence River here as well, so we do get weather systems. They, they, they can move in and out very quickly, but this one looks like it's stopped to watch the race, and it's... Pretty bleak looking out there, but it's looking good for Riley Amos. Also, this outside line for him, there's definitely more traction, better a really, to right. A really key part of mud riding as well, you just saw there, Bart. He's in the right gear all the time. Yes, yeah, to yeah. Keep good the bike cadence, moving. yeah. Never, yeah, keep never spinning the back wheel up, never no. chasing the gear. Even in these muddy conditions, too, you have to push a little bit of a bigger gear. If it's too small, then you're spinning too quickly. He's off and running up here, though, Riley Amos. Yeah. Jumps right. back on. Yeah, smart how he does it. Look how beaten up that yeah, bottom yeah, bit of that very climb is. Deep mud over there. Riley Amos, last lap for him. Young Riley on second place, 32 seconds. 35 for Adrian Brushy. Brushy, third place today, but we shouldn't take anything away from him. Yeah, definitely he will. Take it a, more, a bit more carefully on one of these sections. Together again, the numbers two and three. Bjorn Riley leading in front of Adrian Bragi, the leader. The overall standings, man in the 23. Yeah, Bragi past Riley now. Yeah, he's strong on the climbs. It seems to be. Oh, Bjorn, I just Bjorn let, Riley, is Bjorn Riley looks like he's in trouble here, Bart. Yeah, Bjorn Riley looks like he's faster in the descents all the time. Ah, now also Edwin Brushy off the bike. Recovering of that. Back on the bike again. Yeah, this section over here becomes really bad. 
Oh my goodness, Hard to look make up it. there. Hard to make it. Matthias, definitely for this part. Oh. Ready, doing well to get up there, but it's going to come down to a battle between these two now. So as things stand, Riley Amos will be moving himself into second place in the UCI World Cup overall behind this man, the champion-elect. Yeah, and I think I don't know the exact yes, um, status from uh, Carter Woods, if he's still in the race or not. Otherwise, it will be Dario Lilo probably who will, who will finish third in the overall standings. But Riley Amos... There's Amos off and running. He will overtake Dario Lilo and Carter Woods. Let's see how bad it is over here, how oh. muddy it is. Maybe they make a new part for the next categories. Some fresh grass. For the first few laps it will stay, but not for the whole race. Well, my screen is telling me that Carter Woods is currently 46th, but I don't know if he's still circulating. Yeah, it's also the, the, the disappointment what you have, the pain probably what he's feeling. Look at the rain. Not, not sure what's going on in his body. Yep. Always it's difficult. Happened. Always difficult as well, Bart, because there's there's Riley Amos struggling at the top of that climb. So the track looking really, really blown apart here in Mont Saint Anne, but really, really difficult as well because you get so much adrenaline flowing through your body. Sometimes you can hurt yourself and, and not really realize it properly no, until. No, no it, it, it even hurts more the next day, most of the time. We saw it in the snowshoe last weekend with whatever, like Bruni had that crash, and we all sort of thought. I hope that isn't the title going to disappear now because of an injury that he doesn't realise he has. Or these riders very, very quick to get scanned after uh, identifying any injuries very quickly. It's key, isn't it? It's key. Yes, definitely it's key. Yes, it is. Washi, though, he has been absolutely fantastic this season. No match for this man today, but Adrian Washi. Yeah, what a race. Riley Amos showed us here in Monson then. Bumped into Adrian Boishy in the, the bar on, in Snowshoe on last Sunday evening. We were having some food and he said, uh, he just, he said, he, Carter Woods was just, he said, he's just a beast. He said, I just didn't have the horsepower for him. He, God love him, he apologised as well to you and I because we said that we thought he was going to win and he said, oh, I feel like I've let you and Bart down. <laughs> it's like, Adrian, it's fine. Don't worry, concentrate on yourself, mate. But it's nice to hear these things. He's a class from act. He's a class act, Bushy, on and off the bike. This man, though, Bjorn Riley, has yeah. been superb today. Superb, yeah. Perfect on the bike. His skills, but he's showing us impressive. 28, 28 Adrian Bragi now. There's a little bit of time for Riley Amos to play with. To take it a bit more carefully, more precisely, not taking too much risks. 30 seconds, more like that it is. 28. 28 seconds and the difference between Riley Amos and Adrian Boishy at the top of this one. But Boishy will be happy with his year's work. And look at Riley Amos still cracking on on that yeah, rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, but you no. have to, Bart. That's yeah, the you safest have to, way yeah, to ride yeah, it. You have to show your confidence, full confidence. You have to go in. Yeah. If you start sliding it, then it goes quickly wrong. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of crashes can happen whenever you try and ride at 80 or 90 percent. Yeah, and the riders they have been riding in in dry conditions the whole week in, in training, so they don't ex they don't really don't know how the course will be. It's absolutely fantastic, Amos, at moving that back wheel around, clipped in, just set, just straightening the line off, getting both wheels lined up. It's a really key skill and really indicative of somebody who rides in loose conditions a lot. 24 seconds. Yeah, another loop to do for Riley Amos. It's not there yet. Taking that big wide line, as you say, hunting for grip on the outside yeah. of the track as the drone jumps in behind him. On the grass. You see also on, on these sections, he's riding just on the grass. He's catching up with the guy in the motorbike, clears the track in front <laughs> of him. That's how hard Riley Amos is going. 24 seconds of difference between him and Boishy. Over this little bridge. Yeah, taking that inside line, a bit more difficult, but definitely the shortest. V very narrow in between these trees over there. 
And it's that thing as well, right in the mud bar, you're having to compromise a lot. You're having to deal with lines that aren't there anymore, little bits of track that you want to be on that you can't get over. It's a different skill set. It is, yeah. Sometimes you have to deal with yeah, with, with the course. You have to ride lines, but you don't like to ride with, uh, with, with the best, where the most grip is. Sometimes they're a little bit wider, a little bit slower, but at the end, the fast. And see also how his rear wheel is sliding here on, in this corner, off camber on the grass. Just looking for some more grip on the edge of that muddy line up over this bridge for the last time then, Riley Amos. Been the class of the field today. And immediately, when, the, when it's clear again, when it's smooth, he's pushing hard. Normally we talk about, you know, riders being out front for all race, like it could be a lonely race and you can, it's easy to make mistakes. And I think he's been busy enough today with these conditions that maybe he's not had to worry about that. But he has to be concentrated for the whole time Cost a lot of energy for sure. Adrian Brushy. Is he still on the second? This is Bjorn Riley. Brushy still in second. Yep, nine seconds ahead of Bjorn Riley. So he's put a wee second into him. 21 seconds. He's gaining time a little bit all the time. Yeah, Brushy making inroads, but he's running out of track. Now in the next climb, he will see Riley Amos in front of him. Next climb, that ski piece is absolutely. Horrible. I'm, I'm <laughs> guessing it's even more horrible than yeah, it was you, this morning. You, you don't feel any speed on that climb, and it's steep up. But this man is going to be tackling it for the last time yeah. very shortly. Concentration. Need some windscreen wipers on those glasses. Yeah, that, that would help too. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what Cedric should work on next windscreen wipers. But the number four bike. Yeah, the sometimes track. if you try to clean your glasses also with your gloves. Oh, it's even worse. It's even worse. Yeah. No, no. Better to yeah, leave it how they are and change new glasses in the tech feet zone. You see the water running off the front of the helmet. That's a great shot. Bjorn Riley through there. You can yeah. see the no effort. glasses for him. No, he'll be on the op tracks later on. Here comes, watch Riley Amos's commitment through this rock section. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah, yeah. So deep in the race. And also he will Fields sliding his rear wheel all the time a little bit. No problems. First that slippy rock and then the roots that and bike, the mud again. A Trek bike looking like it's set up absolutely perfectly. Yeah, he just got the weight on the front axle off it and just managed to keep the whole thing gripping the whole way through the, that. The tires these guys are running are really good for these conditions. Riley Amos probably the same as Bjorn Riley has. Oh. Perfectly in these corners. That, there's a big rut there that yeah, you have yeah, to yeah. be in. Now, yeah, you have there? to be in that. That's what he did. Last time, final lap. Yeah, and from here on, it's getting a bit more easily. There's Boishi in that rut. It looked faster to me than Amos did, but 21 yeah, seconds. Yeah, 21 seconds. Yeah, it's not that much, but might be enough. Yeah, we I mean again, it can go wrong so quickly, can't it? But Riley Amos. Here's Bjorn Riley going around that rut, going on the inside. Worked well for him, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. I think that was 13 all. seconds only. 13 seconds. He brought now, it back a lot in this last lap. Does Washi definitely know this is the final lap? <laughs> <laughs> you don't think yeah, he's missed he's, one somewhere? He's, he's pushing a little bit harder than before, taking a bit more risks. I can't see any problems for Amos, so nothing untoward happening on the bike. So but 30 seconds is not that much anymore. I mean, he's been so metronomic and so fast for this whole race that I think he's maybe just managing this one down the line, but 13 seconds would be enough to give you a wriggle on. There's a little bit of time, not that far anymore. Riley Amos. That's 15 now, so he's pushed it back by two. Back marker just getting out of his way. For the last time coming into the tech feed zone. Behind this top soon. Behind this top three then, Tobias Leland having his race of the year in fourth. Luca Martins in fifth. Gutierrez Prieto in sixth. Matis Gay seventh. Barroso's in eighth. Groland Bears ninth. And Carson Beard in tenth. As things stand, heading towards the finish line.
this man has been the class of the field though. Yeah, from the start on. Yeah, Riley Amos, Bjorn Riley. He's been great too, his best performance of the year so far. Let's check it out. Sponsors will love that. Some nice clean logos for the finish line shot. Trinity Racing, MTB. Adrian Boishy, second at the minute. Here he comes. Here he comes though. Your winner today, he has been superb in the mud. He's shone in the rain. Riley Amos takes another win in 2023 and with it, looking like he's gonna collect second place in the UCI World Cup overall. Bart, we love a mud race and we love whenever a rider rises to the occasion. But this man, disappointed. He came close. Disappointed, but he has absolutely yeah. no cause to be. Adrian Boishy. Class of the field in 2023, the UCI World Cup overall title. Second place today. And look at the smile yeah, now. Bjorn Riley. Bjorn Riley. Celebrates these two. Teammates. Factory racing and future racing. Yeah, both track riders, the Americans. First and third today. Great to see the camaraderie. These three know what a tough battle they were in, don't they? And that makes a difference. Yeah, especially in these conditions. <laughs> Look at Riley Amos. He enjoyed that. Look how far ahead they are of fourth place, Tobias Leland as well. Yeah, Two minutes 18 back on our clock. That's a big gap behind the number third in the race. And so much of that part is bike skills. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is. And that's probably also what we will see more in the next categories. I'm wondering in the, with Jolanda Nev in the yeah, women Nev. elite race, she loves to ride in these conditions. She's one of the best, but Fluke Riley Gert. Amos. Look at her nearly men's as well, but Riley he Amos. He loves it too. Oh, what a race he showed. Going through a deep bag of celebrations. <laughs> Riley Amos, great to see. Perfect finish of the season. The start of the year was heartbreaking for him. There were so many mechanical dramas and problems along the way, but towards the back end of this one, it started clicking for the big man from Colorado. The winner, the title goes to Adrian Boishy. Adrian Boishy. Here is Tobias Leland then. Yeah, another track future racing rider, Tobias Leland from Denmark. Yep, the tracks work well in the mud. They do. Tobias Lilleland. Fourth place. Fourth place for him today. Best result of the season. Looks happy with that. Well, he should. Yeah, sometimes we see it more often. Huh? When one of the team riders is performing well, the whole team is yeah, performing well. It we should have been specialized it? last Friday. Evie Richards, Evie Richards said it about that win. I don't think that's worked for Luca Matanda. <laughs> <laughs> Orbea factory racing team. It's Orbea factory <laughs> racing team, yeah. Made it slightly hard to see, but a good race great, for him today. Yeah, great performance from Luca Marte. Um, yeah, Evie Richards said it, didn't she, uh, after that short track win in Snowshoe, that it was actually Riley Amos's win the day before. She said it lifted the whole team camp yeah. and lifts the whole house, yeah. and you fancy going out and getting one for everyone. Sometimes it goes like that and definitely helps the other riders, the team spirits. Riley Amos. Victorious in Mont Saint Anne. Yeah, perfect race he showed. Well, really in was. these conditions. You know, he was off and running a couple of times, but in the right places. Yeah, Sabjel Gutierrez from Mexico. Another rider who's got better as the year has yeah, gone on. Yeah. Two good North American rounds for him back to back. Sabjel Gutierrez. Canyon Collective. Matisse Gui. Messianis Moussi. Different names whenever it's a mud race. So what we're used to seeing. Amos, huge congratulations. Your second win of the season and you've just secured second place in the overall. Good day. Oh, I didn't know I was second in the overall. That's amazing. So. I, I knew it was going to be close just to get third in the overall, so I can't believe that. Oh. And how much did you enjoy it today? It was a bit of a mud bath out there. Yeah, I loved it. Like, I knew 
these conditions, you just have to kind of rise to the challenge and stay calm and focus on just riding well instead of just pushing hard the whole time. And off the start, I knew it was like if I just went for it from the go and just tried to ride my own pace, it'd be the best race I could do. And I just uh, like attacked into the first downhill and didn't look back and just tried to stay consistent and steady and not give up my lead and not crash and make as little mistakes as possible. But it's just it's just going to be craziness no matter what on a day like today and you just have to embrace it and go for it. So it was so fun to watch. What's next for you? Oh, little break and then restart for next year. But this is how we're ending the year. So not a bad way to end. Congratulations. Thank you. Not a bad way to end it, indeed. It's always good to finish the season with a win. Riley, Amos and Bjorn Riley. The factory racing team and the development team, future racing. That can make the difference for an athlete, Bart, can't it? Heading into the long off season or, you know, they might do some slight across, they might do whatever, but they can go in to the start of next year's UCI World Cup Series knowing that they've got what it takes. And most of, it, most of the time, when you finish the season strong, you start strong again as well. It, it, it's, it's such a good feeling. Yeah, nuts to, for to winter. There is Luke Wiedmann. Luke Wiedmann. From Switzerland. Well, we are going to get to hear from Adrian Boisci very, very shortly. And Luke Moyer comes in. Here was Dario Lilo. Yeah. What could have been for him? Well, congratulations. What a fantastic race you've just had. You've secured the overall in the short track, in the cross country Olympic, and a nice mud bath to finish off with. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit like when where I live at home, it's not very muddy, so. I, I, I love these conditions, but I was just not used to it. And in the first few laps, I was like all over the place and not really finding my rhythm and my... I was not very like comfortable, but then I built into a race and I was feeling better and better throughout the race. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a bit of a shame uh, I couldn't do best I could do today, but it, it's, it's all right. How much did you have to adapt your strategy to contend with these conditions? I mean, to be honest, I felt really good this week, so I was I was hoping for a good race. And yeah, I started and I just struggled with these conditions. Like, I'm not used to that cold weather and like my body just, it was freezing at the start and I just couldn't find my legs. It took me a few laps to like find my rhythm and then once I found my legs getting warm into my body, I was better. better. And how does this set you up for next season? Heading to the elites, what's the plan? Yeah, I can say now it was my last World Cup in under 23. Next year I will step up to Elite and race the big dogs. Can't wait. Oh, amazing, we can't wait to see you. Well done. <laughs> Me too. It's been a good season. It's been a good season and I hope next year is going to be better. Can't wait to watch you. Thank you. That's nice information. There we go. Shots fired. Adrian Boisci, his last race. Next As year Elite. Under 23. Next year in with the big dogs. Yeah. Yeah, up in but he's strong enough to do that. But he's only second year in the 23 rider, so uh, he's skipping. So more important years. to keep this momentum moving in a career. But Boisi, who will race in the league next year, Riley Amos, first place. Boisi second, Bjorn Riley third, Lidland in fourth. Then Martin Gutierrez, Prieto, Guay, Barroso, Gomez, Grolomber, and Beard. Yeah, fair play to Ashley Wilmot with a the scoop there. Table Francois, Ethan Rose, Paul Shell, Hudima, Fiedman, Moyer, Lilo, Muzi, Pedersen as they're still crossing the line outside the window of the commentary booth. Yeah, and big gaps in between the riders. It shows how hard the course has been. Here are the highlights then of a very wet start to a big day of cross country racing in Mont Saint Anne. Yeah, it went uh, fast immediately from the start on. Well, Carter we, Woods was there. We called it from the start that the Canadian Carter Woods, after that win last time, I would fancy a good dig at this one. And he was right at the front alongside the overall title leader, Boisi. But once Riley Amos went to the front. Yeah, and he went to the front actually immediately into this race after. Uh, a couple hundred of meters, he was leading the race. There was no pulling him back. Dario Lilo got yeah. swallowed up a bit at the start and was sort of juking it out back there, but never got rolling. No, he lost a lot of places today. Finished top 20. 
Riley Amos, though, and Adrian Boisier just concentrated on hitting their lines and making the most out of the conditions. Yeah, I think uh, Riley Amos, he was also very strong in the defense. He found his rhythm very quickly. Bjorn Riley, who just ruled out a shot a second ago there, did well to catch them up. And even on conditions and paths like these, no problems at all for Riley Amos. And Bjorn Riley in the black kit here. There's Bjorn Came Riley. back to Adrian Brashi. Yeah, superb. The battle for the second place. But you've got to give Boashi credit, Bart. He's not the overall title winner for nothing. He fought straight back again, right at the right time. And next year, already in the yeah, the big the big guns. Can't the wait to category. see that, yeah. It's probably also because of the Olympics, the qualification for France. But uh, yeah, Victor Koretsky, Jordan Saru. Speaking of France, Luca Martin. Another French. Another strong French rider, rider had a yeah. good ride. Carl Woods. Woods. Just moved it, back in these tricky conditions. And it didn't go well for him, and as then, we thought. And here we see that crash again. This crash. Oh, horrible to see. It took him out of the race. Boisie fought back against Bjorn Riley late in the day. Timed it superbly. Riley was really on the ropes at this point. Had burned a lot of matches to get into the position he was in. But Riley Amos, absolutely superb today. Perfect blend. Yeah, no mistakes. Attack and finesse. Adrian Brushy, he came close in the last lap. Second, second place. Second place for Boashi. Bjorn Riley. Third place on the podium for him. Track S future racing. Strong performance of Bjorn Riley. You see track future racing. Trinity specialized, you know, these teams that are yeah, really bringing these young talents on. It's, it's a very good structure, what they have, and also the opportunity for these riders. And also these days, Eurosport shows these categories. Yep. More visibility for the riders, more publicity. Amos, really nice. Boisie and Riley, your top three from Quebec. Here is confirmation then of the Cross Country Olympic standings. Boisie is the Overall title winner, Riley Amos up in the second place ahead of Carter Woods. Dario Lili was fourth, Luke Wigman's fifth. Bjorn Riley sixth after that superb result. Luca Martin, Malacarne, Gwe, Vittoni. Riley Amos victorious in the battle for second though. Alongside Adrian Boisie, who will race an elite next year, he's just confirmed in his post-race interview. Let's hear from Bjorn Riley next, as the rain continues to fall. Yeah, Carter Woods didn't finish the race. What a way to round off your season with your best result so far. Talk me through how you're feeling. I'm pretty stoked. I mean, I didn't really know what I was expecting for today. The weather was like freaking me out a little. So I was just like, I just want to go out there and race. The course was like so sick that I just wanted to shred the descents and have fun on the climbs and see what I could do. Well, congratulations today. Thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> just wanted to shred the descents. <laughs> I think that's what's going to take today, Bart. That yeah. is what's going to take. Yeah, of course. You have to go up too, and that's a hard thing. Uh, but uh, yeah. But we talked about it, didn't we, at the start of the broadcast? That's you know, it's a certain type of rider, a certain type of mindset that sees conditions like we have out there today and goes, "Oh, I can't wait to yes. get on those descents." Th that's how it is, and that's what uh, Bjorn Riley did today. Great to see his big best uh, season performance. Big character on and off the bike, and great to see him getting a good result to finish the season off. Look at the weller. And here we see track factory racing the pits well that gray stripe at the top of the screen generally is where you can see the st lawrence river can't see it today it is absolutely lashing it down here in mont st anne as we get ready to go race some of the under 23 women coming to you very very shortly yeah one start lap plus four laps normally they have to do I'm wondering if they do change anything with the laps. Yeah, the top of some of those climbs looking a bit axle deep, let's just say that. But Riley Amos, not a problem for him. Really, uh, I say, I don't know if you 
if you, if you can say, rode very cleverly, but was very clever when he was off the bike as well. Yeah. Ran, ran at the right times. Running on the right times, yes. But also leading on the right times as well. Sometimes if a rider in front of you makes a mistake, you have to get off the bike too. It disturbs your rhythm. That was absolutely not the case for Riley Amos. Adrian Brogy. Here's the move. And Bjorn Riley. Bjorn Riley left room there. And Adrian Boishy took it. Yeah, on certain point you have to attack on the right moment. And it's so difficult, Bart, in conditions like this, you can be held up by the rider in front of you. You can end up riding at their speed, not your own. Yeah, and it, it was actually a, s a strong move from Adrian Brogy, but he did. The overall title winner. Adrian Boishy, UCI World Cup Cross Country Olympic title winner. He's had that jersey it's most of the year. It's been, it's unusual to see him out of it. We're getting ready for the podium. And it's good to hear that he's riding in the elite category next year. Yeah, we saw Martin Vidari move up this year. He's sort of, he's been in around the top 30 and said right at the start of the year, I think he missed the first one, maybe two rounds. He said that he really just wanted to get experience and feel his way into it, was quite mature about it. I think when Boishy hits the elites, he might fancy uh, claiming a few scalps. I expect him uh, doing well in the elite category. He's such a talent. It doesn't matter what kind of cycling discipline it is. From France and the battle for the qualifications Olympics next year. It will be a hard one. It will be a hard one, but great to see that young man putting himself right in the conversation. Really yeah, and there's also yeah, more motivation, a uh, yeah, new category, riding with the, yeah, the best riders of the world. Really good, um, although very young still as well, a very good ambassador for the sport, speaks very well, very media aware, media savvy. Yeah, he definitely does uh, it. One of the big stars for the future. And he also has the, the right body. He's already strong enough to make that step, that next step. Hey, seeing cross-country racers getting bigger these days as well. You've got Riley Amos there and Quashi. They're not they're not small sort of whippet like guys. No, no. They're <laughs> big, tall. Yeah, Carter Woods similar. Carter actually, Woods yeah. is very big. Yeah. It's sad to see that he crashed and pulled out, but yeah, he's also a very strong rider. Yeah, there's no replacement for displacement. Oh, we're getting ready for the podium here for the other 23 men's cross-country Olympic UCI World Cup. Bjorn Riley first up onto it, third place today, best result of the season, best performance of the season comfortably. Really making good on that talent that everyone knows he has. Getting ready for his Trek stable mate to hit the top step. Before that, wearing the European Continental Champions jersey won earlier in the year. Trinity Racing MTBs. Adrian Boishy. Star of the show, really, as far as 2023 is concerned. Absolutely fantastic. Didn't get the UCI World Champ stripes in Glentress Forest, but. I mean, that's the only blot in his copybook. He came very, very close to a rider yeah, I mean, who Charlie, came down, Charlie as, Aldrich, who came down an age group really <laughs> to get him. So, Riley Amos, he was really, really good in snowshoe. He was even better today in Mont Saint Anne. If you're going to win one bar, Mont Saint Anne's not a bad yeah, one. Yeah, if win. you win Mont Saint Anne, you belong to the world's best, and that's what he does. Riley Amos for Trek Factory Racing then. His second win of the season. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that that looks like a very cold podium to be up on. Bjorn Riley's the only one who's gone up on the shorts and short sleeves, but he's had a jacket on all day. Amos, Boishy and Riley then. Yeah, it looks cold outside. Oh. Bjorn Riley. <laughs> Short sleeves. <laughs> Probably he forgot his jacket. It's a subtle, yeah, subtle, he's given the jacket away, I think. <laughs> it's a subtle flex. Well, these three set to celebrate a job well done this season. They've all had good ones. And they've all finished extremely strongly. Great to see.
Adrian Boishy said that uh, he will move up into elites tomorrow, or tomorrow next year, sorry, excuse me. Well, effectively tomorrow, I guess. It'd be interesting to see what he can do in amongst the established big names of the elite ranks. Well, we're getting ready to go racing. Number 23 women's race very, very shortly. And here are the standings then at the end of the year. The only 23 men. Boashi, Amos, Woods, Lilo, Vidman, Riley, Marta, Malacarne, Guy, Vitoni. 225 points at the end of the day, the margin of victory for Riley Amos. Carter Woods, we hope he's okay, sending healing vibes to him after that big crash in the rock section. Alexander Hedima, 11th, just ahead of Mario Bear. Trudler, Shellikens, Shell, Cornelion is in there in 23rd. Matt Wilson, a good year for him, 25th. Gustav Hebby Pedersen, 26th. Braden Johnson, we've seen some strong showings from the American rider, finishes the year in 33rd overall. Be great to see him back and in amongst it next year. Owen Clark there from Canada, Robbie Day from the USA. Rory McGuire from the UK in 55th. Well, getting ready for a long day in the mud here in Monsignan. We're going to hear from Carter Woods very shortly. How he felt? Hope he's all right. Yes, I hope, I hope too. Yeah, not nice, nice heading into nice the to off season that. with an injury. And that place, just about as nasty a place as you could crash here in St. Anne, and that is saying something. And here we see that again, how it went wrong already on the top. Oof. And his front wheel slide away, then he didn't find his right line. Went off his bike, and then he fell down. His cross-country bike saddles so high, even with a dropper post, you're a passenger for a lot of it. It is, yeah. Yes. And he was full in of pain. His back, his hip. And he will tell us how he's feeling. Still third in the overall standings. Yeah, not a bad year at all. No, no. He showed his strength. Well, we will hopefully hear from him whenever we can, but things looking like there is going to be an extremely cold and wet day. The good news for all of you at home is that you are hopefully watching this somewhere warm and dry. Bart and I are in the commentary booth. It's holding holding water so far. There's none getting in. We've got a supply of water and snacks, so we should be all right. That's yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the pre and post show is outside. <laughs> well, I don't I don't do them, so we're getting ready for the overhaul podium for the under 23 men very very shortly. Hey, we've got Leah Davison coming up soon as well. Yes, he She's will join us, in the, us in the booth. Some extra energy. Some extra energy, definitely, yeah. She she brings a lot with her. Looking forward to that one. For the number 23 women's race and in the elite women's race as well. Leah's going to be in here with us. I kind of think that she may have opted to do that just because it's the only dry place in, <laughs> in Mont Saint Dan at the minute. But we're going to make her work for it. As we get ready for the under 23 Actually, the, minutes the, the overall podium. The weather forecast podium. for late afternoon is dry again. Well, that's, so, that's yeah, nice. That's yeah. about the time I'll be coming out of this box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's see how it will be difficult I tell to you say. What, it's grey outside so far as we can see. I tell you what, Bart, the under 23 men's category, we started this season and there really is a, a period of getting to know these riders and 
sort of learn the personalities and their different strengths and stuff, but what a talent pool that it, is. It, yeah, I, I think the level of the men in the 23 at the moment, it's, it's super high. It's very high. It, it's, it's almost similar lap times than the men elite do, and that shows how fast they are. And you're seeing riders like Adrian Boishy where there's no, you couldn't really name a weakness. No, no, he, he's, he has the, 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 the perfect body, the, 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 the tactics, his perfect mindset to uh, entering the, these races, the I performances he showed us, it's, yeah. I think Riley Amos would race again tomorrow, the form he's ending this season, and he just wants to get back at a race bike, doesn't he? He's another big, big talent, and and that's, I mean, you're you're a good man to ask. You know, having having that competition as a racer, it drives you forward, doesn't it? It drives you forward knowing that there's a rider of this man's capability somewhere else in the world training to beat you. Yeah, that that's what they do, and the depth of this field, uh, and also the different nationalities this this age group has, it's it's yeah, it's very uh, big from all over the world, and also here in the in the, the race we had last week in Snowshoe USA, and now here in Canada. All also the, the, the team support these young riders to look be at, here. Look at the gels in the top tube. I just spotted that off Adrian Boishy specialized, ready to go. It's very smart, then you don't have to take them with them in your back pockets. Maybe the jersey doesn't have. It might get a bit muddy up there, but they're yeah, easier easy to get to. to. Grab. Yeah, easy to get to. Yeah, yeah, that's how it is. There's a big man, Carter Woods. Yeah, and these days you need to have that energy to take to you during the race, most of the time. And as we say, on a cold, wet day, you can get a bit, it, it can be hard to get your hand to the back pocket of the jersey. Your yeah, everything arms is a bit more up yeah, and, stiff yeah. and you, you don't feel so supple on the bike on days like these. No problems for Riley Amos today. It's a mud race, get me the white gloves. <laughs> <laughs> get me the white gloves and the white socks as a mud race, yeah. I'm a professional. Hard to clean these again. Yeah, they're not getting cleaned. <laughs> Take that for free. They go in <laughs> direct into the garbage. Yeah. Or maybe they'll be, I don't know, yeah, maybe I'd say it's a fair chance of that. Or they're the ones that are left in the car and you think I'll leave an emergency pair in the car and then never use them. Yep. But Boishy well, took the title unless, of that performance today. Unless I these are his lucky socks. Maybe, it might be. <laughs> Did you have? Back in the days. I, I, was ne I, I was never fast enough for that to make a difference, Bart. <laughs> Actually, I had. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> lucky socks. Lucky socks. Well, what, what were they? Yeah, almost black at the end. <laughs> <laughs> they started the season white. Yeah. Yeah, no, Cedric, um, Cedric Gracia during the downhill was, was telling me all about that. He said, um, Finn Isles lent him a set of goggles to do his course preview with and then said he would race in those goggles because those goggles had been down the track already two times with Cedric and so that would help him. And Cedric said he's he was exactly the same as a racer. Mm, yeah. I'm not even making this up, commentates in a pair of leopard print socks and matching <laughs> underpants, which <laughs> I had the unfortunate to see a couple of times this season. There's a camera in the booth there. Eh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it was weird, they took the camera out after that last time, but... Um, you know, it's superstition, a key part of race, and I think any yep. sport, superstition I, plays a big part it, of it. Yeah, it is, yeah. How, Two. how did you feel about the number 13 plate? Yeah, actually, it, it's, it's uh, I wouldn't say a lucky number, but it's a good number for myself. It's really interesting. Yeah. Aaron Gwynn yesterday saying, um, I like it, we saw 13. Jackson Goldstone win with 13 on the bike he yesterday. He did yesterday. Uh -huh. and Gwynn always said he loved it because he said he knew that other people didn't like it, and if other people don't like it, that's good. Yeah. I like it too, 13. Yeah, Koretsky turned it upside down, didn't he? And was a snowshoe he had on the... There was an old superstition, if you turn it upside down, it's not it unlucky It was when he won the short track. Yeah, yeah I thought, yeah, all right for that. I wouldn't turn it upside down, no, <laughs> definitely not. You're, you're, you're acknowledging it then, you're making a thing out of it, yeah. There's another set of white socks headed for the bin. Look at the conditions out there today. It's a great shot. You see the mud yeah, tires yeah, hooking yeah, up yeah, through yeah, here. Yeah. The ground is soft and slippery. Not for these tires. Uh, you say that. For this one, <laughs> it does. <laughs> <laughs> those, those last two definitely find a challenge in there somewhere. Love a mud race, though. Love, love, love a mud race. And you see, see yeah, how yeah, slick yeah, that yeah, grass yeah, yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. say, well, where there yeah, used to be you, grass. You have to trust your skills. 
and yeah, yo, the confidence, even in these conditions, and stay off if the, it's sliding. And that, yeah, and it's that confidence to stay off the brakes as well, because if you try and ask a bike to slow down whilst it's sliding, it's not going to like that. No, it's getting even worse. Well, fascinating day of racing ahead of us. We're just waiting on the under 23 overall podium getting underway for the men. And then we'll have the under 23 women's cross country Olympic race. It starts at 11. Starts at 11 on an extremely battered track after these guys have been plowing around it. There's Carter Woods though. Good to see him moving under his own steam. Yeah, staff still there with him, making sure he's okay. Good to hear. Well, she's got a few more layers on him now. That's good to yeah. see. He doesn't look very warm, though. No, his riders have the colts. You can see his face. <laughs> yeah, some dry clothing will help him. But he needs that uh, heated jacket that Pauline Ferran proposed, yeah. though. <laughs> Where are we with that? You were supposed to organise some of those for us in the booth, and I've yet to see mine. Next year. <laughs> <laughs> Next year, with our tear-off glasses. Yeah, we have a couple of things. We've got a couple the, of things we need to do. The needle jersey for the fast, uh, fastest lap time. Fastest lap. Yeah, yep. we were going to do. We were going to make a jersey, weren't we? Well, there is yeah. Carter Woods, third place in the overall this Ooh, year. You could see as well yeah. uh, his step on that podium. That is still hurting around his hip. Well, his he's got back. some time to recover. Not what he wanted today at home in Canada. But still, Canadian national title, what? third place <laughs> Adrian in the over. Adrian Boishy wants to get this one over and done with. Yeah. Riley Amos, a superb ride today. Won the battle for second place in the UCI World Cup overall. Great, great ride. Well fitting off it. Yeah, from fourth to do. From second. From Colorado. He'll be heading back home. Second place overall trophy, Adrian Boishy. <laughs> <laughs> continuing to try and get warmed up. <laughs> well, this is the last time you will see him on an under 23 podium. Headed for elites next year. The UCI World Cup overall title winner on the 23 men's cross country. Adrian Boishy from France. Trinity Racing MTB. Tried to keep himself warm. Uh, he's, give, he's been given another layer to put on anyway. That'll help. European Continental Champion. Ah, Katowitz has it gold too. Yeah. Double bubble for this man. Boishy, Amos, Woods. And there is his trophy. Adrian Boishy is a UCI World Cup overall title winner on the 23 men's cross country. And a big, big future. And I don't know about you all at home, but Bart and I are heading into this offseason excited to see what this young man is going to do when he hits elites next year. Yeah, he's able to to battle with the best riders of the world. No champagne anymore. It's, just, it's too cold. It's too cold. <laughs> they don't need to get any wetter. <laughs> they want to get warmed up. You can see the rain and the hillside behind them there. Yeah, you don't even see the top of the mountains. Next race, cross country Olympic for the women under 23. Getting underway in 17 minutes time. Well, it's been a breathless year of under 23 men's cross country Olympic racing. Thank you for enjoying it with us. We've had a great time. We hope you have too. Stay where you are, though. Plenty more to come from a muddy Mont Saint Anne. <laughs>